the Joe Rogan experience. It's also striking because you realize over the course of the book, and I mean, just and then more books that I've gotten into subsequently that this was something that was going on before the white settlers even got there. That this way of life and the, the raiding and the the killing and that's not what we associate Native Americans with. We associate w- us with taking the Native Americans' land and then them fighting back, and that's when things get ugly. But it turns out this was just a wild way of life that they had had for who knows how many years. One of the things that surprised people when I wrote this book, and I didn't know that I was going to be surprising people because I was just reporting what I found, was 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 that that very thing that that this was. I think people are are often used to the bury my heart at wounded knee narrative of, the, of Native Americans, which is as victims. Yeah, and there's no question that they were victims of yeah. a westward rolling empire and 378 broken treaties, and we can just go on and we know what that narrative is like. But the narrative that I told was a narrative of power, of dominance, of power, uh, which came with brutality too. And I think it surprised. It, it was a fact. It was a fact that that if you go back in time, these Indi- these Native American tribes that eventually got crushed, as the Comanches did, and put on a reservation somewhere and had their livelihood taken away from them. Um, but you know, it, it really anyway. It, it, it's a it's a it's a huge deal, um, and and a narrative that I, I think to me that doesn't take into account the enormous power and dominance and behavior of, of command. She's just, just missing, you know, half the, half the narrative. Well, it's so fascinating because it's essentially, they were living like stone age people and they were doing it very recently. They were, they were doing it like in, in terms of the way Europe is, you could go and see buildings in Italy that were built long before any of this stuff happened, long before the settlers started encountering them, and they were living like this in this sort of, I mean, it's very romantic. The the, the way they lived, just chasing the buffalo and, yeah, and, extremely. And, and killing them and then eating only buffalo meat and then doing very little farming, picking some berries and nuts, and that's about it. I mean, it was just eating meat and raiding and killing. Yeah, so, they were They were... Hunter gatherers. Yeah, they were nomadic hunter gatherers. Yeah, which is what they were, and and what the horse allowed them to do was to, which is what they had been before. The horse allowed them to do that only just really, really, really well. In other words, they they weren't in a position of becoming agricultural Indians. The horse gave them this ability to, and as you said, the the they got everything from the buffalo clothing and and lodging and and tools and saddles and bridles and food. I mean, everything came from the buffalo. So the horse just enabled them to do this on an incredibly sophisticated level. It's the most sad part of the story is the extirpating of the buffalo. I mean, that's uh, not the most sad, but one of the that their yeah. way of life. It's almost like you know what happened, but I'm rooting for them in some weird way. <laughs> you know? I mean, I know that they're not going to win. But there's something about the way they lived that seems so exciting. 